You're the physical therapist. Tell me a little bit about the role that you all play uh, in support of people with ALS. Yeah, so in the clinic, our primary role is to not only check out like the position that somebody is sitting in or how their muscles are functioning at the time, but really how that then plays into how they can then live their life. And one of the big things that we do in ALS clinic, not just talking about um, strengthening and exercises, but I do so much with positioning and by using other devices to help people to give their body a rest break. This is what a friend of mine called conserve to preserve. Conserve to preserve is one of the best ways to think about yeah. it. In terms of respiratory issues, what yes. kind of stretching would work best for us? Anything that targets the anterior chain. So you've got the front part of your body, the anterior chain, and the back part of your body, the posterior chain. So anything that takes you out of this posture and pulls you into this posture. Maybe even just prone lying because there's or lying on your stomach because there's so many people that that have to sit. So just having a little bit of time where you can lie pending that you can still breathe. Um, and then for people that are in power chairs and things like that, we're really big on trying to get, we have three different mechanisms in the power chair. We can tilt the chair, we can recline the backrest, and we can incline the leg rests. And that's the, the fanciest type of wheelchair that we do have. We have ones that can go all the way flat. That just helps you open up the front of your body. So if we're in somebody's in a wheelchair, recline them back a little bit to where you can still breathe caregiver or person, open up the chest a little and hang out there. Just allowing yourself to completely rest on the headrest, just open up through the chest, arms are out to the side and we get that beautiful stretch because mm -hmm. then all of a sudden all those muscles that are attached to my rib cage have more room to expand. If we don't have the room, you're not gonna be able to contract it. So mobility before anything else for me. You are the occupational therapist. Tell me a little bit about <clears throat> what you do to support those of us with ALS. So what I look at and focus on is how are you able to complete doing all the things that occupy your day? With motions around the house, just day-to-day -day activities, whether it's cooking or doing light cleaning um, or getting up from the bathroom to the living room, often one feels fatigued. And it's a challenge to know whether I'm out of breath because I've got respiratory weakness now in those muscles, or if it's just because I'm working a lot harder with my leg muscles, um, the breathing is actually fine. How do you determine the difference? So we look at it as a big picture type of thing. We're trying to minimize the amount of demand on all the muscles, legs, abdomen, diaphragm, arms, the whole thing. We look at it like the tank of gas, you have one tank a day, how are you gonna spend it? Full throttle or parcel it out a little bit more? Mm -hmm. so, so there's some basic tenets of conserving energy. One of them is if you have leg weakness, then it's easier to stand up and sit down from higher surfaces. We do get tired. I mean, that's one of the things yeah. that I have learned is I used to be just go, 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 uh, and I've got to stop at least a few times a day and just rest, sometimes even take a little nap if I've exerted myself too much. As you said, you know, we've got so much energy. So some of the things that play into the respiratory issues from the self-care side, consider, again, toileting can be very fatiguing, especially if you're having problems with um, constipation, diarrhea, anything like that. And that can be problematic. Um, so use your higher toilet seats. Uh, try to stay on top of your diets. Showering is another situation that many times in the warm dampness, you may start feeling a little bit fatigued with the breathing. Interesting. So hmm. use your breathing machine for a few minutes or moments prior to showering, okay? and then you'll have a little bit more to get through that shower. Sit on a shower seat if you can, that would, is most beneficial. And then you may wanna have a little bit, a couple shots of air when you get out as you're drying and cooling down. Hmm. Try to keep the water temperature a little bit cooler or hmm. turn it down for the last few minutes in the shower to cool your core down, cool yourself down, then it'll be easier to actually breathe. Great, yes. thank you so much. This is really, really so instructive. You are so welcome. Thanks. Yeah, so I highly encourage everyone, talk to your occupational therapist as well about strategies. Mm -hmm.